Hello and welcome to the second video in this mini-series about uh, campaign uh, management. Uh, in the last video we set up our campaign and now we're going to have a look at uh, the kind of things that you might want to do uh, before uh, a session or before the first session or uh, whatever. Um, so we're going to open up our uh, modules here and uh, then open up the Lost Mine of Van Delver. And if this is the first time that you're doing this then I would suggest that you go to the reference manual which you'll find uh, in the library here uh, and just read through the module just read through uh, everything you don't need to read everything in fine detail but you need to read through to give you an idea of what the module is about what the adventure is about and what's likely to uh, happen um, and this one as well, another thing that you might want to do uh, is there are pre-generated characters in Lost Mine. Um, so you might want to add these to your campaign. Normally, uh, the first session in your campaign, you'd be creating characters along with your players. But if you wanted to give them a head start uh, and uh, maybe they were inexperienced players, you could uh, use the pre-generated characters that come with the module. So we just click on these green buttons here and we can see uh, down here that these characters have now been added to our uh, campaign. And if we go in here uh, to the character selection window, you can see that they are there. Uh, click on them and everything is all set up for you. They don't have portraits or tokens. Uh, we can sort that. If we click on portraits here, this will open up uh, all your portraits. If you mouse over these bags, it'll tell you um, where they come from. Let's go to the Smiteworks one uh, and uh, let's see if we can uh, find a suitable portrait. There's the case there. Uh, so we'll uh, choose him. Um, the portraits uh, default to the token. If you wanted to change the token, if you wanted to do something different, then uh, go to your assets. Uh, make sure you've got tokens selected. Um, we could just uh, search for dwarf here, uh, since this is a dwarf character, uh, and it'll uh, come up with all the dwarf tokens that you uh, have. Now, you will have more or less of these uh, than uh, I do. It'll just depend on uh, what uh, tokens you have available. So here we've got uh, a dwarf fighter, so that'll do. Just drag that uh, and uh, just drop him onto the uh, tokens uh, section. And now we've got a token for our character and we've got uh, a portrait. Um, <clears throat> so once we've got that, um, we can then start looking at uh, our module, uh, perhaps uh, looking at the story, going through the story uh, and just uh, looking to see where uh, you might want to uh, change the story in any way or where you might to uh, pep things up or do anything that you want to do to personalize this uh, module uh, because <clears throat> the modules the adventure modules are completely editable um, you can change anything that you like in, in these modules and I know for example that in the uh, first uh, encounter goblin ambush here there is uh, no map uh, it's it's a theater of the mind thing, but you might want a map. You might want to uh, add something here to uh, this map, this uh, uh, scenario. So let's supposing that we wanted to uh, add in a, a map here. So uh, we're going to uh, make a space for a map, and then we're going to go to uh, our assets, and we're going to uh, click on images and then uh, click on folder and this is going to open up your uh, folder and you can see here we've got roaming smite works fantasy grounds campaigns play 5e fan delver images so this has opened up the images folder in the uh, campaign that we are looking at um, now i've already selected uh, my map here we go here and i'm just going to drag this in and uh, copy it into uh, the images folder um, we can uh, close that down uh, and then we're going to hit this uh, little button here uh, and just uh, refresh folder assets. We're going to click that and you can see that uh, a new bag has appeared called campaign. And if we open that, here we have our uh, map that we just uh, dropped in there. So click on the uh, map to open it up. This gives you a preview and then it tells you to create an image record. We'll click on that. And that now gives us a, a map, the Twisting Trail. And if we have a look in images here and uh, select uncategorized, we can see our Twisting Trail uh, map has been added to our uh, combat uh, into our campaign. And then all we can, all we need to do then is just drag that uh, to there, 
uh, we can uh, make this bold to keep it in line with all the other uh, headings. And now we've got our map added to the, uh, or linked to this uh, story entry. Uh, so if we uh, we then want to uh, maybe do some stuff to the map here, we maybe want to go in and make the uh, grid visible. You can see the grid here defaults to 50. That's far too big for this map. So uh, let's just change that and let's make it uh, 200. That should be a bit better. Yeah, that's a bit more reasonable. Um, so that's the, the players would be coming along this map and uh, the goblins are going to ambush them. Uh, so we're going to open up our encounter now and we can see uh, in this encounter uh, the little uh, sort of goblin icons underneath the goblin name. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just drag these onto our uh, map and we're going to place them where uh, we want them. So we're going to uh, put them behind this uh, cart here and maybe in this uh, bush here uh, and maybe another one in this cart so that uh, they are uh, hidden from the players maybe when the players appear on the right hand side of the map here and the uh, uh, goblins can then ambush them. So we've now set all that up. We can close that encounter. The goblins disappear from the map. We can uh, close this map. And then when we're doing our story here, uh, we can just uh, click on our image. We can then uh, open up our encounter, we can click on the add encounter to combat tracker here and the uh, goblins are now on the combat tracker and you can see that they're on the map. We just uh, make them visible once the PCs see them uh, and we're uh, ready for uh, a fight. Uh, okay, uh, let's uh, have a look at uh, another uh, encounter. Uh, let's uh, close this one all down. Uh, and let's uh, go a little bit uh, further on uh, to the uh, Cragmore hideout. And uh, let's open up the players map and let's click on this uh, little pin here, the goblin uh, blind. And uh, if we open up the encounter here, we can see again that we've got a couple of uh, goblins and they're already placed on the map. You can tell by the little ticks. And if we uh, click on the uh, place, you can see that they've added to the combat tracker and you can see the placement of the uh, goblins. Uh, now, maybe we don't want this um, token. We don't like this token. Uh, we want to change it so we can come into our tokens uh, assets here. We've searched for goblin uh, and let's choose these uh, this token here. We're just going to drag that and drop it onto uh, that token uh, on the uh, encounter. Uh, and it will replace uh, that uh, token. So if we now delete these and put it back on, we can see that the tokens have changed uh, for the uh, goblins uh, as it has done on the combat tracker as well. And maybe we don't like the placement of these goblins. So if we untick uh, these little ticks here, uh, then we can have a chance now to replace the tokens where we want them. So maybe we want one uh, down here um, and or maybe we want another one up here. So you can freely edit uh, any of these things uh, that you uh, want in the uh, encounters. Um, we can even alter the goblins themselves. So if we click on this link here, we can open up the goblins uh, character sheet and maybe we want the goblins to be a little bit more, uh, give them a little bit more strength. So maybe we want to give them 10 hit points. Maybe we are going to increase their armor class to 16 or something like that. Then feel free, you can add in, you can edit all of these things if you like. But just be aware that if you do edit uh, this link here of the goblins from here, then you're altering every goblin in the adventure. So if we go to our NPCs list and open up uh, this goblin here from the NPC list, then we see that he's now got armor class of 16 and hit points of 10. So every goblin in the entire module has been changed uh, to that. So you might not want to do that. Maybe you just want these two goblins to be um, stronger, in which case what you would need to do would be to uh, make a copy of, of the goblin by just dragging and dropping. Uh, open this up uh, and you'd need to then maybe give it a different name. I don't know, goblin 2. Uh, and then you can do your alterations there. And then instead of having these two goblins and these, you would just uh, delete these, uh, add in uh, goblin twos, change these to two, 
Let me change our icon again if we wanted to, and then we can uh, replace them back uh, onto uh, the map. So uh, the, the point here is that you're completely free to uh, edit as much or as little of this uh, as you want in these terms. Now, one thing that uh, you'll maybe have noticed is that when we change the uh, goblin here, when we change this NPC, uh, the uh, uh, let's um, do this so that it's a wee bit clearer. Um, if we look at all of the little icons to to the right here, um, we see that they're all it's just like a little book icon. But this one here that we altered, we changed it. We now have a book and pen icon, and this means that we have changed this. We have edited this goblin in some way. It's not the original. So if we don't like the changes, if we don't want to. Uh, uh, if we wanted to revert those changes or, or get rid of it, then all we need to do is to right click over the goblin and then go to this symbol here to revert changes. Click that, you'll see that that little pen and book icon sort of changed back to just a book. And if we now open up our goblin, we see that he's back to 15 armor class uh, and seven hit points. So all the changes that we made to this goblin uh, have now gone away. So you'll see that book and pen icon anywhere where you have uh, changed something. If we go back to uh, our uh, story entry uh, and find the uh, first thing that we uh, did here, which uh, is down here a bit, uh, the goblin ambush, remember we added a map to that. And you'll see that it also has um, a pen, a book and pen icon in it because we added in this map. Uh, to there, we changed it, we edited it in some way. And if we didn't want that, then we can go and right click here and just go to revert changes, and all of this will go back to what it was in the original module. And you can also revert the changes in the original module itself. So if we go to modules and activation and find Van Delver. Uh, if we right click over the book here, we see that we've also got a revert changes uh, icon here. So we can revert the changes to the entire module uh, uh, if we wanted to, and that will get rid of any edits that you have made uh, to the module and put it back to its original state. So use that with caution. Um, if you have made a lot of changes and you want to keep most of them and just some of them that you want to get rid of, then don't revert the entire module. Otherwise, you'll uh, you'll get rid of all of your changes and there's no way to get that back. Um, so if you wanted to change, I mean, you can you can, as I say, you can edit any of these things. So if you wanted to uh, add in uh, some more text here, then you can. I mean, uh, you know. If you wanted uh, to make some descriptions here, then you know we just make that a a text box. Uh, you can uh, add in a, maybe there's a, some kind of a speaker here. Um, you can type that in or whatever, uh, and you can prepare all of that so that when you're uh, ready to. Uh, play this particular thing you can just click on the speech bubble and it'll appear in chat the players will see it so you can alter any of these things you can uh, make some bold text if you wanted to you know you can basically just uh, edit any of these story entries uh, any npcs any quests anything that you like uh, you can edit the only thing you wouldn't be able to edit would be uh, the reference manual here you can't edit that um, but everything else uh, if you look in this list if you wanted to change some of the magic items then you could definitely do that if you wanted to add in or change some tables you can do that so really um, you're free to edit any part of the module so that it, it becomes uh, your module it becomes your adventure and you've added your personal uh, touch uh, to it you can even add in extra stories if you wanted to um, i mean if we go to uh, our uh, story entry list here um, if you decided that you wanted um, something you know in between some of this maybe you wanted some other um, thing then you can just simply click on the add item create a new story and you can see the numbering that's been used here so we've got p 1.03 
And if you wanted to add an entry after uh, three but before four, then you could call it 3a or something like that. And then it will uh, automatically uh, pop itself uh, in there. And I think I've I made a mistake. I put in a dot rather than a hyphen. So there it is. So you now have a new uh, story entry which is in there. Um, and you can then just uh, type in text or whatever, copy text from somewhere, paste it in, uh, add whatever you, you like. So you can add in your own uh, story entries uh, to the module as well. Um, so I think that's probably uh, enough for this one. Uh, and in the next video, I think we'll have a look at uh, exporting or creating your own modules and uh, exporting uh, those uh, or creating your own campaigns for exporting into a module. So thanks for watching. Cheers for now.